you were talking about these patterns that you look for. What's an example pattern that indicates buy or sell? Uh, the great thing about the world we live in today is we have charts available to us that, that show us the historic data of what's happened in the market. You think, great, that's really profitable over this last five years that I've tested it. Now let's go live. Jason, thanks for making it to good old Helsinki. Oh, you said you were here last time in Lapland. It was a bit colder then, yeah. Like the nostril hair froze up every time you breathed in. <laughs> <laughs> That's where supposedly, so this is Finland. This is where theoretically Santa Claus came from here. Yeah, yeah. We, so, we, we took the kids there like 10 years ago. We've done the whole like Christmas, yeah. bake the cookies, get the present. It was did amazing. you eat reindeer or did you... I did actually, but they, I feel like so that's sacrilegious. Eat, like, let's, let's go see Santa Claus and eat some reindeer, reindeer. meatballs. Yeah. They're pretty good. They're pretty good. I'll tell you one thing about Finland has the most aggressive birds. So I bought some reindeer meatballs down in the main central. You know, normally if you put your food down in some cities, the birds will take, they'll, they come, <laughs> they hit it right out of your hand, man. They're strategizing. Like five, they like five hit my head, five hit the, knocked it down. So. <laughs> Yeah, be careful. And they warn you when you go to eat in Finland. They're like, our birds are overly aggressive. Really? So there you go. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Well, you can see this is the, you see the saunas out there. Yeah. Saunas were invented in Finland thousands of years ago. Yeah, right. It's pretty cool. Yeah. I, went, I just went, midsummer was a couple of days ago. And they have, it's called Johannes, which means midsummer, I think. It's, mm -hmm. not, it's not a person's name. I thought it was Johannes. It's Johannes. Anyway, you, I went and, they have these huge lakes. It's pretty cool. And went to a sauna, jump in the lake. Nice. It's very, very healthy. I know you like to live a balanced life. So you teach people how to trade. I do. Yeah. But you also try to minimize stress. Absolutely. And you've been following me for how long? I've followed you since 2016. 2016. Yeah, yeah, so it's yeah. It's been a while. Yeah. So I always talk about the good life. Health, wealth, love, happiness, the balance. So Absolutely. You live on a farm. We live on a farm. Pixie Wood Farm. Pixie yeah. Wood. Do you milk cows? No, it's uh, it's not. We don't have any farming. It was okay. a converted farm. Yeah, yeah. But it's, you don't have any chickens. We've had chickens. They're aggressive. Like we got rid of them because they what were so aggressive. Did you have They're on steroids? <laughs> chicken Weren't roosters aggressive? are bad. Weren't they roosters. Aggressive? The female hens aren't too bad. They're so selfish. Like yeah. they were, you'd feed them, and like whatever's the weakest one won't get any yeah. food. You know. It's, Survival of the fittest. Yeah, yeah people sure. say humans are the meanest. I'm like, you ain't been around animals. <laughs> Chickens also eat each other, too. Yeah, if right. one gets a cut, you have to take it away, or else the other ones will cannibal. Chickens are basically, have you ever seen Jurassic Park? Uh, Velociraptors? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're little teeny Velociraptors. Yeah, they move. Exactly. Man, yeah. If, yeah, yeah. if you catch a rat or a mouse, throw it in chickens, they'll... <laughs> <laughs> so you got the balanced life. You have a big YouTube channel. You're showing people how to make money with not, you're not doing day trading, right? No, I, I, I was a day trader for many years, but I've, um, I just stopped day trading when COVID hit because I wasn't sure what was going on. Yeah. Um, and I'd had a big win myself. Um, we hit, we, we had a big 18 hour trading session right as COVID hit and with everything going on, my emotions went a bit on yeah. tilt and, uh, that wasn't like me. And I thought, you know, I'll redistribute this capital into other things and more slower trading, intraday trading uh, yeah. from then on. But but what I teach people to do is to make money, make build wealth, basically. Yeah, yeah. And a lot of people go into trading thinking they're going to build wealth. Right. In actual fact, they lose they yeah. lose most of their wealth very very quickly. Right. Yeah. It's it, it's never been easier to make money online. Yeah. As you say. Yeah. But it's never been easier to lose your entire net worth as well. Yeah. yeah. Right. It's like a click of a button, you can lose everything. Yeah, I got a. I have a. I was talking about this private client where I mentor people one on one, and one of my private clients, he's a very wealthy guy, pretty young, under thirty five, and he made five million in January. And then I was talking to him, and he's like, "April, I lost three million. Right, but you know, he sticks with it, and he ends up making ten or twenty million net a year. Yeah, he, he does a little different. He's got his own. He does crypto and. Oh, he doesn't do options that much. You don't like options that much. I don't. I, I I did start dabbling with options when I initially got into it, but I also dabbled with online poker. Yeah. It was really what speculation can I master that's going to increase my returns? Yeah. You know, I, I needed about twenty percent per year at the time. It was only to replace yeah. the active income that I had at the time. Yeah, yeah. And um, I ended up blowing like forty grand in the fun in forex, uh, and yeah. I thought I 
I owe it to my family to really master this now. Yeah, a so, lot of people ask about forex. That's, right. So, do you teach forex? Yeah, that's my that's my primary Your main thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's that's yeah. my primary thing. Yeah, but I couldn't stomach like your guy that lost two million. I've got a friend like that, Siam Kid. He'll go down forty percent, and I can't stomach that personally. Yeah, yeah. I, I can't stomach. Yeah, you 6%. have to be you have to be tough. Yeah, yeah, and and even average like, person gonna freak out. Yeah, at, I know. But you but, see that with crypto, people are like made i have a friend put a hundred grand in the coin and he made two million dollars in, in like two months right and he's like what if it goes down i'm like well you're up a lot <laughs> it could go down a lot you still got a lot of money you know yeah but studies suggest like humans can't tolerate any a, a fluctuation of plus or minus 10 percent in yeah any emotion right yeah so i guess that's why you know religions worked out that you can give 10 percent of your income and you won't moan about it yeah but that kind of if you lost 10 percent of your Income, you might not be too upset, but anything lower than that, I think is really going to cause you problems. So do you teach the mindset too? Yeah. So that people don't have a heart attack? Of course, attack? of course. Yeah. I mean, the mindsets, it's so difficult to get through to people though, because people only tune in to what they want. They don't tune into what they need, right? Yeah. yeah. You have to, you have to kind sure. of... You have to kind of tell them stories and metaphors to get on board and meet them where they're at and then give them what they need. But yeah. until that, it's like... I only want the six pack, you know, right. I, um, that guy's telling me I'll get a six pack, but in actual fact, you have to change your whole mindset and the yeah. way that you eat and the way that you, same in trading. I think people go into it thinking that you can make a lot of money very quickly, which is arguably true, but you can also lose it very quickly yeah. if you can't do it sustainably and repeatedly. And there's so much false information about trading out there. I mean, yeah. What do you think is the biggest scam concept when it comes to stocks trading forex yeah right now i don't know if you've heard of these but there's a lot of these trading challenges like okay. funding challenges okay they're, they're it's like a wolf's in sheep wolf in sheep's clothing really it's like a dressed up broker mm -hmm. as you know an innocent kind of um shiny object that basically lures you in to say if you trade and you get this return in a certain amount of time we will fund you some money so that then right. you can trade your account, right? Yeah. Which is a very like glamorous and attractive offer for someone who has low capital because yeah, you yeah. can really accelerate your account and you can start making more money. But the thing is, any professional trader in their right mind knows that the wrong approach to trading is trying to make a certain amount of money in a certain right. amount of time because I don't even know when my returns are going to go yeah, up. Yeah. You know, it's, it's, a, it's, it's percentage over time that I focus right. on. It's not... I'm going to make 10% in the next month. Yeah. And just by going in with that approach, you're now, you've now got this time pressure. Yeah. And if you do get 10% to meet the challenge rules, yeah. all it was was luck. Yeah. So now you've got to be lucky all the time to carry on with the challenge. Yeah. So it's a flawed approach, right? Yeah. You so, can't, markets are going to give you what they're going to give you for that day or that week. Exactly. You can't go, you know what? I want to buy a Ferrari today. <laughs> I need 73% return. The market doesn't give yeah. a crap, you know, about yeah, yeah. you or, or what you want to buy. Or so do you, trailer. how do you feel about, you know, I'm in Finland or we're in Finland right now and, and they joined NATO partly because Russia and Finland have a very complicated history, right? There's a place called Karelia that's been kind of traded back and forth over the centuries between Russia and, and Finland. They join NATO because they're worried about this Ukraine invasion, how it'll affect things. One of the biggest things that affects the markets are big global news like that. Yeah, right. I remember I've got a, I have a billionaire guy, in my in my mastermind. He's he's worth a little over a billion, and um, he had a company for sale in 2021, peak of the market. He had it for sale for he got two billion cash offer, and I told him I said take it. And he's like, I think I can get 2.3 billion. And he only had 300 million in it, right? So he was gonna walk with almost a billion cash. He right. didn't own 100%, but he owned the majority and preferred shares. Anyway, then that Ukraine war hit and the company that was gonna buy him was a publicly traded company. Their stock shrunk. So they lost, he hadn't been able to sell the company. So the point is, if you're greedy, yeah, and then some crazy world event happens, you can lose a lot. Now, luckily, this guy has a billion already. But imagine, you know, people who forget that there's things outside of your control. You can't stop 
Putin and Ukraine from starting, you know? No. So how do you train your students to deal with uncertainty of the future? Because a lot of people are like, man, I think there's going to be this and the world's going to end and the Illuminati and globalists and all. What's your take on all Absolutely. that? Absolutely. Um, I'm a technical trader, okay. so it's pure technical analysis. So you're looking at charts and charts. Yeah. It's it, I'm a chartist, and I would never trade purely off the news. And every uh, you know, I've got some high up um, analysts in prop firms who who their job is to be an analyst. They went yeah. to university to study to be an analyst, and they tell me there's no way that you could possibly know uh, right. what's going on all over the world. But also, think about this. There's a 50-50 opposing opinion to everything. Yeah. So someone wants Trump in presidency and yeah. someone doesn't, right? Yeah. And, so, and, and so it's not that you're trying to guess the, like, the number or the figure. You're trying to guess the market participant's reaction yes. to the number. It's which a is psychology like, game. It's impossible. Like, yeah. that's, that's literally impossible. So there's institutional traders in banks that do trade heavily off of fundamentals like that like nato and and you know um disasters and things like that but they've got the capital to move the market they, yes traders like us we can't move the market yeah. you know we're, we've, you we've got, got a lot of money to move you the have to yeah yeah so we're just using patterns that happen frequently over a long sample size mm -hmm. of history through different seasons through different recessions through different um catastrophic events and FOMC and ECB press conferences and presidential elections and you see patterns that happen frequently all you need to do is build rules around that pattern yeah. to capture that move and not be greedy yeah because if you're greedy so take your profits off take the your table. profits off the table yeah and get into the next one that is trading yeah. right that's that's what trading is it's not hold and buy and hold that's investing so what's it you were talking about these patterns that you look for You've got this system you teach your students. Give us a preview. Give us an idea here. What's an example pattern throughout time, last 30 years, that indicates buy or sell? So every every morning, um, there's the London Open, yep. obviously. And every afternoon in the UK, there's the New York Open. Mm -hmm. And there'll be a period of time where the London traders sell off their positions. Yes. And the New York traders come into the market and start yes. buying up the markets. There are certain... Uh, the great thing about the world we live in today is we have charts available to us that, that show us the historic data of what's happened in the market. Of yes. Candlesticks and you know, yeah. charts. So each of those candlesticks, each of those, those patterns on that chart tell us a story. And I look at it like a tug of war. You can see the open and the close price of, yeah. of, of the session. You can see what happened during the session. So if we open high, did we close high? Or did we open high and close low? Yeah. Which all of these things, when pieced together, you can build a really solid case for an entry if you get that confluence. You know, if you get that confirmation. So entry for people watching, that's when you buy. You, you can buy or yeah. sell. You know, if you see rejection, you can sell. If you see support, you can buy. And... A lot of people, I think, go into trading thinking you can just look at a candlestick and buy the market. It's actually an, a series of things. Yeah. The more that you put together, the bigger the case for entry, the, the higher probability your trade's going to be. Yeah. The problem when people, uh, you know, this is the biggest thing and it comes down to brokers. Um, when people start trading, they go and test the patterns. Yeah. And what they're not factoring in is spread. For the broker right yes. so if you're thinking i'm going to get in here and i'm going to get out there and my stop loss is going to go here you think great that's really profitable over this last five years that i've tested it now let's go live and then the broker slaps on the commission yes. which they haven't accounted for right yeah so my broker this company in the uk called trade nation they have fixed spreads yes which means that whatever you test you can pretty much have confidence going forward and i anyone listening i'd highly recommend that you only use a broker who honors fixed spreads because yeah. it's the number one thing where they say oh it went into the asia session and all the spreads got volatile and my broker ripped me off and you know i think making statements like that just shows the lack of education on what a broker's job is first of all like a broker's there to make money on your trades for right? sure uh, you know there's nothing evil about that but brokers who don't honor their spreads yeah. you know is is critical in my opinion because the back-tested data is the only thing that's going to give you confidence going forward because we don't know what's going to happen going forward. Yeah. So 
if all you need is the confidence in the data, then you need the data to be as accurate as possible going forward. Yeah. Therefore, less fluctuations from reality in history, fixed spreads. That's, you know, that's, that's number one. Number two, understand that your broker is going to put you on a B book at first, which means your order won't even go through to the real market. Yeah. They, they basically just pay, you know, they take the opposite side of your trade, yes. knowing that you're, you're probably going to fail yes. and you're going to lose 90% of your money. And then they, once they realize that you're quite good, then they'll put you on the A book and really fill your markets through to the interbank. But, you know, there's all these things that go on that people just aren't aware of. And yeah. they just think, I'm going to open an account, download the app, you know, press buy and sell when someone tells me to. And uh, I think you're going to make sail off into the sunset. It's just BS. Yeah, people, it's like Elon Musk said, you get paid in proportion to the difficulty of problem you solve. So a lot of people go, Ty, what's the easiest way to make money? I'm like, well, actually, anything easy. The good, the good analogy, if you go to the grocery store and you're in line and they open a new line, what happens? It instantly fills so the line is even. All humans, if there's a get-rich-quick scheme out there, that's easy. And all you got to do is go cut and paste this thing or press a button. So many people will start doing it that it will stop being profitable. Yeah. So the money is actually in learning things that the average person is too lazy to learn. That's it? It's just so simple. All you, and it doesn't have to be super hard. Okay? I was just reading... I found something crazy. I don't know if you use ChatGPT, but eventually, yeah, by the, the way, ChatGPT is going to help people trade. I want to build an algorithm that where it's not quite there. I heard a guy, one of Elon Musk referred a guy that says in 2020, by 2030, the smartest person will be a thousand times dumber than AI. AI yeah. will be a thousand times smarter yeah. than Albert Einstein and Stephen Hawking. Anyway, so I was, I was reading... I was asking about my grand. My grandfather was a scientist, and uh, I was like, "Tell me about my grandfather, Martin Birkenrod." And I was driving home from his thing, and I didn't. My grandpa published a paper. I knew this, but in Nature, I don't know if you know Nature. Yeah. Nature is like the number one scientific yeah, journal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. With a guy who won a Nobel Prize. Right. Okay. My grandpa was a marine biologist, but then he became an astrophysicist. So I, I told ChatGPT yesterday, "Give me the paper." It's the, so my grandpa was an expert on asteroid belts. It's so fucking complicated. I wrote it to my family. I was like, our grandpa was smart because I don't even know what. So the point is, when you know something hard, there's no competition. No. Or there's so little. So it's like, okay, asteroid belts, that doesn't help you make money. I mean, it helped my grandpa in his career. But for the average person, you should dig in and learn how to trade. Yeah. Well, and you don't have to spend eight years getting a PhD. All you have to do, if a bear is chasing you, if you go into a forest when you know there's a lot of bears, bring your fat slow friend. Because all you got to do is <laughs> run faster than this dude. The bear's going to eat him. So it's the same with learning to make money. It is. All yeah. you have to do is run faster than the average. And the average education level when it comes to money yeah. is so low. You don't have to be Nobel Prize level money maker. No. You just have to be like a six out of ten. Yeah. And all of a sudden there's nobody competing with you. So how do you get the average <laughs> student? Because you got this, you were talking about this YouTube video that mm -hmm. has, you know, millions of views and you did this challenge. Did the average person come in already know knowing a lot about the market? Or you trained them like yeah, from scratch? So, so one of the things that I do uh straight up is like get rid of anyone you know who is chasing that that fantasy so you kick your students out sometimes yeah all the you're time. like here's your money back all the time idiot. do you know what when you when you start a business venture like that when you don't need money yourself yeah all i want is a is a result for them yeah right? so when the focus goes to just getting results for them like you and yes. your private group right yeah the spotlight goes on them and all of a sudden it's like it speaks in volumes because yes. everyone wants what that person's got. You don't have to say anything, right? So with all of my effort and attention going towards getting them a result, all I have to do is filter out anyone that's looking for fantasies, yes. give everyone realistic expectations and a good mindset, and spend 80% of the time talking about like the realities and the numbers yes. and the, you know expectations. Once you set that, the skill of trading, you could learn in a couple of hours. Like, yes. you know... I can teach you a strategy in 30 minutes. Yeah. But then you've got to go and 
test it and yeah. you know and, and make it your yeah, you own. gotta make your own instinct you've got to make your own instinct and that's the thing where you have to enjoy trading like you yes. have to be fascinated with the markets if, if you're just doing it you know waking up every day and looking at charts because yeah. you think you're going to get a load of money right you're not and, yeah. and the money has to be secondary but the yeah. money is definitely a byproduct of the right approach and so you had students get rich Oh, we've had, yeah, we've created um, 28 liquid. By the way, units. disclaimer, because we live yep. in the modern world. Yeah. Just because he had students get rich. <laughs> I mean, you're going to get rich. No. Okay. Yep. But I just, I'm always fascinated. I hope it's still a free enough country. I can ask this, you know, like yeah, the know. government's like, don't overpromise. I'm like, okay, but am I still yeah. allowed to ask? Because I like to hear cool stories. What's yeah. a cool story? Yeah, a cool story. Um, Talking about prop firms, we've had nine students funded in Manhattan prop firms okay. on remote desks, um, and we've created 28... So for someone who doesn't know what that means, what's so, that So mean? uh, a prop firm is basically like the most selfish company in the world where you just <laughs> trade the money of the company and grow yes. the company's money, and then yes. they, they profit share with the traders. Yes. So their only job is to employ good traders. Like yes. that, that's, that's it. So you had nine of your students get so good that Wall Street in New York was yeah. like, we want you. Yeah, Midtown oh. Manhattan. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So that's um, that's that. And that was a six-month interview process. We helped them get, again, it's all just sweating to get them a result, you know, yeah. sweating to get them good results. And when you do that, you just get word of mouth. We've, you know, we've never had to place advertisements or anything like that. 28 liquid millionaires that we've created in the last five years from wealth building strategies. Yes. From everything from, you know, index funds and ETFs and stocks and things like that, that we've helped them understand yeah. how to go and develop. Um, and by so, the yeah. way, I'm going to put some case studies on our case notes. I'll put it Please. below. Yeah, so we've got a whole testimony in the page. description. I'll put, give me these case studies. I'll put them Absolutely. on my, on my, on the, on the podcast notes. So Absolutely. people can go through these. Yeah. It's interesting what you said about, you know, making money though. Like there is a, there's just simplifying that. I think there's a lot of noise on social media at the moment. Everyone's chasing, I mean, the NFT thing and the, and the crypto thing. You know, there was a lot of hype around that, but people do tend to really feel like they're missing out. They develop this FOMO. Yeah. And they forget the, the simplicity of, of economics. Like, there's only, there's only one way to get money, and that's from another human. Exactly. Like, and there's only two ways to get it. You either serve them, yes. <laughs> and they give you money for what you've given them, or you beat them at a skill, you know, yes. like trading or boxing or golf or, or whatever it might be. Or you hold up a bank. Or you hold up a bank. but you do old school you, style, you, western you, style. <laughs> <laughs> it's crazy. There was a time in American history where banks got robbed, like, daily. Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, Dunning Kruger, like yeah. Dunning Kruger came from like that guy that robbed the bank, and he believed yeah. that he had gotten away with it. He couldn't yeah. believe that they caught him. Yeah, like and the two detectives were like Dunning Kruger, and they, yeah, it's crazy. Yeah, the yeah. Dunning Kruger, if you don't know, means basically dumb people trust themselves too much. Yeah, right. And smart people doubt themselves too much. <laughs> yeah, it's a real problem in the world. That's what happens with politicians. Massively, the world gets led by not very intelligent people. With a bit of confidence. Yeah. And yeah. I, this comes down, as I say that, just to prove my point <laughs> using my powers. But yeah, that's a big problem in the world. Anyone the smartest with a, people don't become politicians. Of course. Everyone yeah. with an ounce of self-confidence can stand up on a stage that is social media now and potentially reach millions of people. Yeah. And just bullshit. Yeah. And, and Tell me about honestly, it. Honestly. Yeah. So yeah, I bet you there's a lot of people watching this that actually could be good at trading. But Dunning-Kruger's effect predicts that the smartest people watching this will overthink it and be like, oh, I bet trading won't work for me. It's actually a big problem with making money. So yeah. the, I get, you know, I've been with my personal brand coaching people on making money for a long, or about as long as anybody in the world online. It's crazy. It's not the smartest people who end up making the most money. It's the people who just have they just believe it's a little bit like if you're religious who believe in the bible or any religion people have a little faith yeah because you can always go for example somebody watching can go no trading like jason says won't work because if it would work everybody in the world would just do it and therefore the smartest people in the world would be using his strategy there, there's no money left for the rest of us but that's not how the world really works the way the world really works is humans are built, sadly, to procrastinate. 
So people who just do, like I've had students, you know, my most success stories is like kids in high school who saw my Here in My Garage video, saw my SMMA, saw my e-com. I'm talking they were 16, 17. They were too young to realize they should doubt me. Right. The richest kid in almost every country under 30 is one of my students. And what do they all have in common? They started at 16. Yeah. And then they're like, oh, Ty, you said to make a social media agency. Or Ty, you said to do e -com. Or Ty, you said to do home sharing Airbnb. And then one of them last year made $23 million net. He's under 25. I'm yeah. just with him in Dubai. And I'm thinking, is that the absolute smartest person who follows me? No. When I do seminars, all these genius people come through. And I look at them. I'm like, how's, how's money going? Well, Ty, I've been contemplating since 2017 if I should do your program. That's, like, it's it's all going to come on a decade, bro. Hurry up. I think that's it. I think yeah. it's the smartest people aren't the best risk managers. No. They have no appetite for risk whatsoever. Yes. And that is the thing that, you know, if you do want to build wealth and have growth, you have to be able to manage risk and you have to be able to take risks. Yeah. Um, trading really isn't about making money. It's about not losing money. And yes. in order to do that, you have to be really good at managing risk, which means taking risk. Yes. You know, as well. Um, and when you do that, you make the money as a byproduct. It's not, I'm going to try and make money and then I hope I don't lose money. That's, yes. that's not how money's made. It's, you build a, your system automatically manages for that. It's like absolutely. sell every time you make. Do you use a simple fixed rule like that? Yeah. Sell every time you make X profit, take it off the table kind of thing? Yeah, I go for like two and a half to one minimum uh, trades. So mm -hmm. every trade is a two and a half to one risk reward profile. So okay. that means I'll make two and a half on every trade and I'll only lose one. But then my yeah. strike rate on the on the system is about 60%. So over time, yes. know, I'm not majorly, I'm not like right every time. Yeah. But because I've managed my risk that way, I, I make money over time. So what do you personally for yourself, you put a uh, thousand bucks, mm -hmm. right? Let's say I, you ever seen this show like Undercover Billionaire that make people lose everything and start over. So let's say you started over. And you had, whatever, $1,000, that's it. You borrowed it from your grandma. What would you expect to make on that per month or per year? What would be a goal where you're like, oh, I did pretty good? Knowing what I know now? Yes. Yeah. Knowing everything you know now, but starting from scratch. Yeah, great return for me would be like 38%. Okay. So you'd want to make a 38% return on a grand. Yeah. I've per made... year? Or yeah, per year. year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, 38 is a lot. So if somebody starts trading like the way you teach, and they lose a little bit of money at the beginning, that can be a good thing because it makes them humble. Absolutely. I, yeah, I, I recorded my most popular video, my more, most popular long video in the last couple months was one where I was like, if you haven't been through hell, you can't actually experience heaven. You, there's no contrast to appreciate. There's no right? contrast. Yeah, yeah. I so if somebody losing, putting 100 bucks in, losing it, then they'll, then they'll pay attention to what you teach. Absolutely. I don't yeah. think you lose anyway. I think it's a lesson. You know, th th there is a cost to any lesson yeah. And whether you're going to pay someone outright for mentorship or you've got scammed, well, yes. there's a lesson in that scam. And how much has that earned you in the in the long run? Probably loads. Probably yeah. lots of money. You know, you're not going to do that again, that's for sure. Yeah. So instead of thinking about, oh, I've lost this or I got scammed here, we'll just see it as a lesson and, and, and grow from it, you know? Yeah, there's a famous CEO and one of his executives made a big mistake cost the company millions and millions and he's they said yeah are you gonna yeah. fire that guy he said no he cost just me. learned millions on my dime yeah, he'll never yeah. make that mistake again he's gonna be the <laughs> smartest guy working for me it's actually true that's why you should give people a second chance yeah not a 10 time not 10 chances but a second chance 100 because a lot of times people become sadly this is one sad thing about the human brain only a few people can overcome this most people only learn from mistakes. Yeah. You know, yeah. now what Warren Buffett says is humans only learn from mistakes, but there's no rule they have to be yours. That's why I tell people to buy online courses because people go, oh, isn't that a get rich quick, quick scheme? I'm like, well, the first course I bought in 2001 by Corey Rudel took me from literally sleeping on a couch, taught me how to do Google ads right. when it was early, and I was making $8,000 a month on recurring. Right. I had a lead generation company in finance, insurance, and I, I never looked back. So I'm like, well, of course, if you're actually ready, like the saying is, when the student is ready, the teacher will appear. I just literally said this to my son yesterday. You said this? <laughs> Does your dad want you to learn something? <laughs> we were just... <laughs> we, we were we were just having a discussion about that. You know, yeah. you can't get through to people who don't want to listen. Yes. And um, 
that, that's why I asked you if you read the Kabbalion, funnily enough, because it's like the, the, the ears are open or the, the lips of wisdom only speak when the ears are open or something along those yeah. lines. And it's it's the same thing. You know, people just don't listen. Yeah. Um, yeah. But, uh, I like the one that says, uh, correct, a, correct a fool and he will be angry at you. Correct a wise person and they'll love you. That's really the thing. Sometimes I say something to somebody and they get annoyed. And I'm like, let me ask you, let me tell you a little thing. Which one are you? Because the proper response to someone telling you something you don't know, you should really love them. Because yeah. think about this. You teach trading, right? Average person's been in school from age six, approximately, to at least age 18. Mm -hmm. Okay? And then some people end up going for another four to ten years. Okay? Depending on their... That's a long time to come out knowing nothing about the markets. The average person, if you say, what's the FTSE or something? People, people don't know what this is. No. People hardly know Dow Jones. If you ask the average person in America walking the street, what's the difference between the Dow Jones Industrial Average and, you know, NASDAQ? People, it's like you're talking about, but you know what people do know? They know all the names of the Kardashians. Yep. They all know all the characters. Henry VIII's wives. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, Americans don't know that. <laughs> but they know all the Marvel characters. Yeah. They know anime stuff, which yeah. fine if you like that stuff, but don't know stuff that doesn't benefit you at all. Yeah. Maslow's hierarchy of needs. The bottom is food, shelter. water, shelter. Yeah. Physiological needs. Well, People come out of school, and the average person in America or in Europe, they don't know enough to provide basic food, shelter, water. And above that is safety, meaning you need some extra cash in your bank account to have a safety mechanism, right? People aren't equipped, but like I said, they know who the A-list celebrity... You know what people know a lot about? Music. Oh, yeah. I meet people. They know every song, yeah, yeah. every lyric. I said, bro, why don't you take your memory and memorize something that can actually give you food, shelter, water, and safety. You know? here's, here's the funny thing about trading. You know, it's a lot of people that want to get into trading can't afford their food bills. Yes. Can't afford their shopping, right? So yes. there was a study done in India, in Southern India, 56 cities, they tested the farmer's IQ. And they found that when the market was, was, was booming and was great, right, and it was flourishing, their IQ raised by up to 30 points. Huh. than when it did when they were in poverty. So when it was low, booming market, they couldn't afford, the, yeah. you know, there were famine, basically. 30 points of IQ. Now, if you want to learn to trade, you have to have an IQ of 115, you know, yeah. somewhere around there, because it is... Yeah. A little above average. A little above average, because yeah. it's process-oriented. It's logical yeah. thinking, right? Decision-making. And you can't unlock that part of your brain yeah. until you've got your physiological needs taken yes. care of, right? So you need to know that I've got money in the bank for six months yes. or 12 months, you know, and I know that if the shit hit the fan, I'm, I'm going to be all right. Yeah. Know? Then I can unlock that creative side of my brain and I can start learning new things. Yeah. So basically the approach that most people are taking into trading is flawed. It's the, it's that approach that's stopping you from being able to learn to trade in the first place. So yeah. it's like catch 22. Yeah. <laughs> on that, what's your thoughts on crypto trading? Crypto trading. Um, I mean, right now, it's not being used as a currency. So, yeah. I mean, it's tiny, you know, yeah. minuscule part of it is being used as a currency, right? So it is just a speculation. It is just a hype vehicle or an investment for the future that you believe in that is going to then amount to be a real currency and it's going to be used uh, against other currencies and other economies. Um, do I trade crypto? I don't trade crypto, but I do buy crypto. I buy, mm -hmm. you know, I own quite a bit of bitcoin now um did you watch my video in 2016 i put a video out 2016 it's actually the most watched crypto video i think but youtube took it down after a while oh, really? but it's, it, 100 million people saw it i told people buy bitcoin and i started i started live streaming some crypto masterminds at my house bitcoin was at 3500 when i start and when i i was yeah. telling people i think this is a name brand i think this is gonna last people were like ty's telling people to buy at the top 3,500 wasn't the top. <laughs> yeah. ETH was 190. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, so you're more of a find a token or coin that you believe in and hold it, but don't see it as something that's that's equivalent 
to a currency. I would example. I would trade it, but again, there's not enough data historically for me to gotcha. get, get to test to then get the, the yes. confidence going forward, right? So yeah, it's yeah. too young. Whereas Bitcoin, the first placement that I put in, because I put a public placement in on YouTube as well, mm -hmm. in 2018, November 2018, I got in at 3,580 something. Mm -hmm. uh, that was pounds, so it's yeah. a little bit higher under. And um, I said, this is where I'm getting in. And I held it, and two years, two months later, we did like a 600, 226% return or something. And then I got in again, and I put that public. Um, but that was only because at that point, I had 10 years of data. Yes. Um, I so got, you like Bitcoin because it had a little bit longer. Gap. Yeah, I just tested the compression breakouts and saw that they yeah. more often than not broke out. There was bull runs, bear runs that I could like sit down and chart out and analyze data. And so you're not out. looking so much at the altcoins, <coughs> the new coins. It's just spec too much speculation for it you. It is. I've got, you know, like one of my friends, he's in a community who's actually able to move those coins, you know, because yeah, yeah. they're, they're those are small <laughs> yeah. enough. People yeah. can self-fulfill the prophecy. Yeah, right. Yeah. This and is going to go up if you buy it. There's, for people I'm not who, saying who you should buy yeah. it, but... <laughs> yeah, for people who don't know, the, if you're not into trading, there's something called thinly traded markets and what that means is the good thing about a thinly traded market is is a little bit of buying so 100 people go out and buy some makes the price go up because there's not that much available but the downside of that is when people start selling a thinly traded thing it can plummet from being Very worth quick. ten thousand to five bucks yeah yeah and if you didn't get like out that, quick it, yeah yeah you, yeah yeah, yeah that that is a problem with crypto but so that, that's interesting to know why do you think the rich right now are getting richer? Ten Great men, question. You go to the Forbes list. Ten men possess wealth equal to the bottom four billion. Fifty percent of the world combined, all their yep. net worth comes is not worth more than Elon Musk, Zuckerberg, Bezos, Larry Ellison, Warren Buffett, the two Google guys, you know, the Walmart fan. Just about 10 people. Mm -hmm. So why do you think that's happening? Because there's many theories. I have friends who are communists. They're like, well, this is a culmination of capitalism evil. I have other people who have a theory that, you know, my mom, for example, thinks all the rich people get together in the Illuminati. But what's your theory? <laughs> very, very simple. Like money flows from those who value it least to those who value it most. Mm. And when I say value it most, they turn it into assets that create freedom and delegation. So those people at the top, all they've done is figured out how to delegate everything else. So when you print money, so the, 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 bottom, the people at the bottom, they spend every penny of their monthly income on people that own the assets, the, yeah. the, the middle class people that own the businesses. And then the mis middle class people rent their businesses on the land that's owned by the people up here. And then the land here is controlled by the, the super, super rich. Yeah. And at that point, there's no tax. Yeah. They don't pay tax at that level. So there's no filter back to the poor. Mm. So because that's the way it is, when you go and print a ton of money, mm -hmm. you don't give it to the rich people. They don't need it. You give yeah. it to the poor people. And what do the poor people do with it? They spend it back up. Right. So you print a ton of money and instantly it's back up in the hands of the rich. Yeah. And there's a bigger wealth divide because there's more money. Yeah. You know, And then the rich go and spend it on things that they find cool. They're not going to buy a poor housing thing or a community center. They're going to right. buy a helipad in Dubai, you know, and they're going to get less invest in these helipads and they're going to spend it on AI and it's just going to create a bigger and bigger so divide. So you see it getting bigger, the divide. Bigger. And I see yeah. it's like Charles Dickens. I, I think yeah. we're going to have poor, poor people okay. like literally on the street uh, in, huh. the next, in the next five, ten years. What will cause that? A Great Depression, a single instance... A crash in the stock market. What happens? Yeah, um, in your opinion here. I mean, we're in a, a recession uh, at the moment, but I think it will be technology. I think it will be AI. I think it will be AI. People who just think it's a gimmick and aren't embracing it, yeah, will not get on board with it. Yeah. And the people that are will, and they'll put a ton of money into it, and the jobs will be taken. Yes, you know, and I don't know what the answer is. You know, I think AI could be. The, the thing that solves the... It could be that people just live and get paid to live. Right. Right? Universal and I don't really know where I'm income, going with this, but it, you know it. what I'm talking yeah, about. Yeah, they right? call it's, it basic universal income. Yeah. So so they'll get paid to live and then 
but then who will build the sewers and the buildings and you know the hard manual labor that's they're rolling out robots i saw a new these robots these ai right. robots it's gonna be i, haven't I have it. mixed feelings because i have a farm that's super old-fashioned i live with the amish for two years they don't have electricity right. so i i if everything goes bad and ai doesn't work out i got my horse i can farm with horses <laughs> Yeah, right. I can. I got. I'm coming to live Make my own hay. Yeah, I got my own river with water and in middle Amish community too. Right. Um, on what the flip side, AI most likely um, is going to get so powerful that, like you said, a lot of jobs are just going to be gone. Mm. There are the Uber drivers. That's been a huge thing. Uber drivers are self driving cars already happening. Yeah. Without even AI, truck drivers. That's not going to happen. I'll tell you this. I remember my stepdad. I, I grew up, my mom was a single mom. My dad was in prison, didn't have money. I don't think my mom ever made five grand in a year, but let's say she made 10 grand a year. My, she got married to my stepdad when I was eight. I remember her saying, Ty, we're moving up in the world. He delivers mail, makes $28,000 a year. We're like, yes, we're going to have money now. <laughs> anyway, I remember my stepdad telling me, I said, what do you think about this new email thing? Is this going to threaten the post office delivering mail? He said, Ty, people are going to always want to get real mail. They're going to love it. It's like a little gift every day. You walk out, you open your mailbox, you get your mail. And I was thinking, that makes a lot of sense. Well, he was wrong on that. Yeah. Digital things that are faster, they do replace. And now who gets the mail? Yeah. Average person doesn't even check their mailbox in a year. No, if you don't have a business, who's checking the mail? Yeah. So the point is, a lot of people say to me, no, Ty, I'm not going to want to get in an Uber with a robot driving it. Well, you get in airplanes, and I'm telling you, airplanes are already basically on autopilot. Yeah. And the way most people drive, I'm not sure AI ain't going to be a good thing for driving. I'm like, you mean get all these... <laughs> horrible drivers off the road you know human error yeah yeah right the real question though and i want to ask you this going back to making money because that's that's kind of what this podcast is about do you so let me let's step back away from ai for a second it's a whole nother podcast we mm. need to have what do you think is the simplest way for somebody to get financial freedom to get rich if that's their goal but just to make enough money that life's good. What exactly do you think? Exactly that, yeah. right? So first of all, stop, have a number. Like have yes. an ideal lifestyle and price that up so you yes. know what it costs. Because everyone, everyone's looking up to people on Instagram and going, I need the I need the things, you know? But actually, is that important to you? Yeah. What is important to you? It might be a farm with no electricity, right? Yeah. What does that cost? Understand what that costs. And the next thing you need to do is stop buying things to impress other people, mm. you know, and and save and invest that part of, of, of your income. Yes. You know, that, that surplus. If you just save and invest your money, uh, get an 8 to 10% return per year, you know, you will end up relatively wealthy. You'll, you'll be yeah. in the top 10%. You know, you really will. Um, but the chances are, the more you stop focusing on trying to impress other people and trying to buy things to keep up with people, and you've got a real tangible figure of what your ideal lifestyle costs, it will get you motivated and it will help your creative brain come alive to start really focusing on working towards that, right? And then you'll start a business or you might you might start making more money because you've let go of all that noise and you're making more money serving someone or, you know, in your business and you can put that into it. And because you're working towards an exact figure, you've got this newfound confidence that you can you know, I know that when I get that much money, I can live off of this at this return. When you know that stuff, it's it's really motivating. Yeah, mm -hmm. I call that minimum goals. Yeah, everybody in the world is like, when I talk to people on the phone, I'm like, it's a lot of entrepreneurs. I go, what's the minimum amount you need to be happy? That's it. And got uh, most dudes, especially you know, in the modern world, they're like, hundred mil. I'm like, let me get this straight. If I wired you 99 million right now, you're going to be depressed? No, 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 I'd be happy. Okay, then 100 mil is not your minimum goal. And I keep going down. The average person doesn't need as much as they think. No, no. And, yeah. and the beauty is when you get to the minimum figure, yeah. you earn more money than you've ever made. It's yeah. almost like you can't, it's accidental or you just can't help but earn more money. 
Yes. Right. So when you when you're in a place where you don't need money, you will earn more money than ever because you'll see opportunities. Right. You see you're not things. Stress you, yourself out. Exactly. I tell people it's just like being at the gym bench pressing. You can have a big vision. So if you're a skinny dude, never lift a weight, you can have a vision. One day I'm going to bench press 500 pounds, but you better have minimum goals. Totally. You better be like, let me start with the bar. Totally. Because people who jump on heavy weights right away, you you rip your pack. Yeah. You rip, and same with making money. I get people go. Absolutely. I'm like, you're confusing vision and goal. Your vision might be to be wealthy, but your goal now needs to be, I always say, just keep adding zeros. Have you made $10 a month online? 10 bucks. Yeah. Sold one thing. Once people do that, I'm like, now the next month, add a zero. Now you try to do 100. Then you try to do 1,000 a month. And then I remember doing 100 bucks a month online, then 1,000. I remember hitting, add another zero. 1,000, 10,000, 100,000. Then eventually you can try to do, you know, I've done a million a month. Then you can try to do 10 million. I've done 10 million a month, yeah. you know? You raise your standards, right? Yeah. So you can, everyone can have goals, but you don't always hit your goals. But you always meet your standards. That's right. Like if you if you had a, a a pay at your job, chances are you would not be happy about a pay cut. Yes. You know, you would go and find another job to meet that. And then if you went up ten grand, you wouldn't take a pay cut. You'd probably go and find another job if they wanted to cut your pay. Yeah. But you're still not hitting the hundred grand a month. So it's nice to have goals, but if you just raise your standards, everything goes up with it anyway. Yeah. Same with the gym. If you've if you've got a standard, if you look in the mirror and you've got a standard of yourself, you're not going to let yourself slip. Yeah. Uh, and then you push the weights and you get a bit more. You know, you get better results and then you go right. I'm never going back to where I was before. And that's why you need to hang out at the right gym too. Yeah. Right. I'm going to Platinum Fitness or something in America. That's where everybody out of shape goes. Right. People go, well, I want to go to Platinum Fitness because I'm out of shape. I'm like, that's the gym you precisely should not. You should go to Planet Fitness when you're a pro bodybuilder, although their, their machines aren't strong enough. But because then you've already achieved so much, yeah. you don't get dragged down. But the average, I'm like, hey, if you want muscles and you have none, you need to go to Venice Beach Gold's Gym. Right. Arnold Schwarzenegger's in there. <laughs> really? And, it, yeah. it, you know, that's harder. And, and, and the same with making money. I said, you got to go into a room where you're the poorest person yeah, in the room. Yeah, taste it. I sad. like to do that. I, I had lunch with a guy that's kind of a mentor to me. He's in his 70s in Beverly Hills. He sold his company for $600 million clothing line. And all along the way, he had been taking that money over the last 40 years. Mm. He, he bought commercial, all the office buildings in Beverly Hills. He owns prime central right. Beverly Hills. And, you know, this dude's worth eight, nine hundred million. I want to have lunch with that guy mm -hmm. because this guy's a genius. And so the more you can, the best thing about the Internet when it comes to making money is you can put yourself in the room with geniuses. Yeah, You can watch videos, interviews with the smartest people in the world at making money. You couldn't do, people don't realize YouTube came after 2006. Yeah, Elon Musk was in the PayPal Mafia. There was 23 dudes working on PayPal. Yeah. One of them was my friend, and uh, Elon was 23 of them. That was a 2001-ish, 2000, mm -hmm. maybe even 99. I don't remember the exact years, but out of that, two guys founded YouTube. YouTube didn't even exist. So Elon Musk got to be in a room with the smartest people, the most genius people. One guy started LinkedIn. Yeah. You know, so... Yeah. Use the internet to make money by getting yourself listening to people who are a hundred x where you are. Hundred percent. You know what I mean. Hundred percent. Yeah. But but uh, yeah. I mean, I do think people get deflated as well though because they say, oh, you know, it's only had a hundred views or two hundred views or whatever. But it's like, imagine trying to speak to two hundred people and get your message out to two hundred people. It's, it's You're ridiculous. talking about people building their first social yeah. media presence. Like, yeah. They they get discouraged by yeah. like a hundred views. Yeah. Well. Go and talk to a hundred people and then tell yeah. me it, like that was hard. <laughs> you know? Yeah, people now are like TikTok inflation. People are like, oh, this only got 50,000 views. I'm like, that's a big stadium. Yeah, I know. And you know the thing I, I watch now, a lot of your switching subjects now to personal social branding, you know, uh, personal branding, a lot of stuff goes viral a month later now. Right. The algorithm's weird. I had a video I just posted it had it, it came out the gate not very strong let me look on my instagram and it's just gaining the algorithm starts to show it much later it's Definitely. this one on you know i did a video and i said here i'll show you the beginning it's kind of funny i said it's the most legit 
What's the most legit get rich quick scheme in history? It's now at 929,000. It's grown like wow. a couple hundred thousand. But when you're building your personal brand, put a lot of content out. Yeah. Because sometimes Funny. it'll take off six months later. Yeah. That's what happened with this video. What, yeah. You've got a video, your trading video. I'll put it in the show notes. So we, we, the, it was the only video. This video, I don't want to stop playing. <laughs> I'm trying to get more views on it. I'm going to play it 900,000 times during the play. But um, it, it got how many views? It's uh, currently about four and a half million. Four and a half million. But this, this video was the only video that I sat down and created a thumbnail six months before I even did the there video. There you go. Mr. B style. Right. And it was the and it, and we put thought into it and um we put it out in January and it it got about ten thousand views and then in May, which yeah. was like five months later, four months later, it just started yeah. rocketing. Like literally a thousand, ten thousand subs a day. It was yeah. crazy. And now we're at like three hundred thousand subs. And that's just a year. Like that yeah. was literally a year ago that it took off, and um, yeah, like, we were blown away by it. it. Don't underestimate the the algorithm playing out later because it. I think it looks for positivity and positive comments and. Yeah, yeah. And, well, the algorithms aren't changing so yeah. much. The AI, it's basically, algorithm is basically AI. Yeah. By the way, on that note, what do you think of AI trading bots trading the stock market for you? Um, yeah, I think there's going to be benefits and drawbacks to that i think um ultimately the financial markets will always be led by humans mm -hmm. and not you know it's not the postman about the email thing uh I, I can't ever see the economy being moved by ai just because of how economics works um but i do think it will make the markets more efficient so mm. traders retail traders your edge will become very very small yeah you know and that's where it will filter out a lot of these traders that are just in it to you know the instagram traders or whatever it will be people that really do study the markets and refine that edge you know yes. every, you know and do the continuous work on their trading um so i think there'll be a harmonious integration between humans and ai trading yeah. the financial markets but i don't think it'll ever so that's my postman uh statement i don't think ai will ever take over the trading of financial institutions. Okay. At least not. I might be wrong. If you're, if you're watching this in 20 years. Yeah. We might have to edit this out <laughs> in 20 years. <laughs> edit real time. Or if well, it's, you, if wouldn't it's say, you wouldn't say never, but you say in the next five or 10 years, you don't see that happen. That's no. pretty far off. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So you made over $168,000 trading in less than 24 hours. Yeah. That was, uh, was, that, was that when the light went on and you were like, I can make a lot of money. Actually, that or was... Or did you already know yeah, how to no. make money? Yeah, that was towards the end of my day trading reign. Uh, that was an 18-hour period just before COVID. Okay. And um, I was in six trades. And again, it was all technical, but the news played in favor of my technical analysis. Mm. So I was long and long and short and short. And then the news mm. exaggerated those positions. And instead of... What kind of news would exaggerate? It was um, unemployment news. Ah. Uh, it, it actually, it was non-farm payroll. It was NFP, which was out on the first Friday of, of every month. Isn't it funny they still use non-farm payroll? That shows you how outdated our well, financial I, system. I now 1% of the world farms. Yeah. And they still yeah, call yeah. it non-farm. Yeah. For those of you who don't know, basically the governments in different countries, but the U.S. publishes employment numbers whether we're getting more although do you believe this like i see joe biden posting on his instagram he's got official president one it's like i've dropped inflation i'm like eh, this dude's never been to grocery store <laughs> i don't even grow, grow i don't shop i always said like in 2006 i said i'll know i'm successful when i don't shop anymore but i still once in a while go in to check the prices mm. i don't know how people are living no I did that recently. I, I bought a steak at a restaurant I use, always go to in Hollywood, <laughs> California. I forget. It's a tomahawk steak, so it's a big steak. This is hotel room service, by the way. Right. Not at a fancy restaurant. Sarosha's here, and I was like, I always, I don't look at the price, you know. I'm just like, oh, get me a steak. It was $330 for one steak wow. room service. That yeah, thing right. used to be like 120 bucks. Yeah. Yeah. I so I don't know. These government numbers, non-farm payroll, take those with a grain of salt right now. I mean, they're they're manipulating numbers. Definitely. Absolutely. I think But but you're saying 
you still look at those numbers because everybody else is looking at them. So even if they're false, they still tell you how to trade the stock market. I think if you want to be a good trader or investor, you do have to be connected to the masses, the yes. mass market, the people. You know, it, you have to go out and ask people because because bubbles and inflation, it's all just theory and fake. You know, you yes. print money, you don't really know what the real situation is on yes. the street. But there's the thing on the street that will tell you what's going to happen. Yeah, yeah. So you go and talk to people on the street and you say, why haven't you, you know, why haven't you renewed your car insurance? And they're like, it'd like double the price. Yeah. And you're like, right. You know, yeah. why haven't you, re you know, why are you defaulting on your mortgage? Yeah. You know, it's three times more expensive. Yeah. Right. You know, and then you start to understand what's really going on and why people aren't spending money. Yeah. And then you see stimulus checks come in and you think, well, that's just going to end up in the, in the hands of the rich as well because they're going to spend it straight on. Yeah. <laughs> things that the rich people own. Yeah. So uh, I think you have to be connected to people. Like you say, check the prices and if you're in real estate you know it's very common for people doing real estate to go around and check how many houses are for sale in, in certain yes. areas and things like do that do your homework exactly when you so when you made this hundred and sixty thousand dollars in yeah under 168,000 and under let's say 18 hours how'd it feel by the way yeah it was it was a good day like my trading the that was most, a good day where you're jumping around we, we called it the 100k day in my in my house and do you remember this your son how old your son eight. how old are you uh, I'm 19 now, but when it happened, I was probably what 16. Did yeah. he give you? Did he buy you something? I don't think he was doing much after that. After the yeah. tequila. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you no, had tequila. I was bad. So, what do you drink when you lose money? <laughs> <laughs> I don't drink anymore. <laughs> Punch. <laughs> no. Tequila. I stopped drinking very soon after that. But um, yeah, we we had a bit of a celebration. Uh, up until that point, I'd had lots of like 30k trading sessions like yeah 30k 30k but 168 was just like what year was no, that it was 2020 2020 yeah so actually people are all feel fearful of recessions in this but it's probably your biggest opportunities when markets are going crazy it was literally early april like J march was the covid yeah. april everyone locked down it was that friday and uh <laughs> I didn't know what to think, to be honest. You know, it threw me because I, I'd been so in control for so many years. I'd made loads of money on trading. And then I had that in, in that day. And then everyone was shut down. And I was like, it was one of those things which like, do you put it back on into the machine? Yeah. You know, or do you take, you know, cash out, take your winnings and, and go and do something safer? And that's what, that's what I did. What do you figure you've made in your trading career? Trading stocks, what have you made? Forex, all this. Yeah, just from What's trade, just from my trading account alone, only probably about three million. Yeah, 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 three million. It started with how much? Sixty grand. Sixty grand into three million. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But obviously, I've made way more in in like investments and business and things like that. And so, what are investments you like outside of forex, outside of the stock market? What has made you money? Uh, Real estate? No, but, gold, um, trading, and business, like business, honestly. Yeah, You're starting digital education yeah, online companies. Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. If you can build a good lean online business that's educational and high value, and you actually get results for people, you you, it's, you know, it's you can. Yeah, you made twelve million. You said with one, one video. online education. Video. One video, yeah, yeah. That was one video. One YouTube. So, yeah, that one video, um, and it's a great you know with all the tools available today, it's so cheap to be able to do that as well. Like you don't have to go and set up a shop or. Yeah, you know, run mail and yeah, employed tons of staff. It's so. When did you start your first? These online are things business? that I took away from you. Yeah. you know, years ago. You know, starting online businesses. Yeah. this is. I would it's never. It's funny people still ask if that's a good idea. People are so slow. Well, I started my online business if... in '01, and I'm like, people are like, I think I did my first podcast. I don't know, 2011, and I remember 2011 being like. I think I'm too late to podcasting. Yeah. Everybody's doing it. Joe yeah, Rogan right. has one. Gary Vee had one. Now I look back. For those of you who think it's too late, you're going to look back one day and be like, it wasn't too late. You know, like, yeah. It's what they say about planting a tree. The greatest yeah. time to plant a tree 20 is 20 ago. years ago or today. Yeah. Well, people ask me all the time, is it too late to buy the S&P 500? <laughs> you yeah. know, and you look at the chart and it's like, you know, this is human evolution. It's not... Exactly. It, it's not uh, a financial chart it's actually humans and beings around a table innovating and yes. helping this planet grow like that's what it is yeah so let me ask you this the biggest mistake 
that your students make when trying to learn how to trade. Buy stocks, stock market, Forex, crypto, all of it. If you had to sum it up in one simple sentence, what is it? Is it being too greedy, being too selfish, not learning enough, being too impulsive? What do you think is the short version? Of, of the successful... No, the biggest mistake. The biggest mistake. So somebody yeah. watching here goes, oh, I'm so excited. This guy made 168,000 in 18 hours. I'm gonna go start. Yeah. What do you if if you're a predict you're like a fortune teller, you're like that probably the mistake you're gonna make is boom, what is it? There's I mean there's so many, but the biggest one has to be um not not backtesting data. Mm. That's it. As as unglamorous as that sounds, yes, there's a lot to be said for knowing the forecasted results in your trading. Right. Uh, and if you don't know that, you are just gambling. It's li literally roulette. Right? So you're looking at a chart. Let's just, let's do an example here for somebody who's maybe doesn't understand this, but let's make it real simple. What's an example of a trade you made in the last couple months that did decently? Let's just pick a specific thing. Okay. Um, one that I can think of is the dollar yen, which is a mm -hmm. cross currency. Um, we reached a price that it hadn't been since 1990 yes and uh so this is currency for is people currency. the dollar dollar, dollar against the yen, the yen. against yeah, the yen, american yeah. dollar against the yen and uh 1990 was the last time that this price had been tested yeah since then which is 34 however many years um it just started approaching that price point again and the great thing about these markets is p traders analysts bloggers you know, people who write for Forbes magazine, they've had weeks and years and months to write about this this level, right? Mm -hmm. So everyone's looking at this level. And there's likely to be some sell-off there because people that have been holding for all of that time are going to take the profit. They're not going to push past mm -hmm. 1990 prices. So when you can... And I've put this on YouTube, by the way. You can go and watch this video. I literally got in and showed you how I got in. But when there's some other, like coinciding confluence factors not just oh we'll test that price now let's sell but if if there's some price action patterns that are showing some deceleration if there's some rejection candles that show that people are starting to take their profit if there's even handle price points like when you put the fuel in your car at the petrol garage right you try and stop it dead on the mm. on the zero those psychological numbers play out in the markets as well so when you've got a, a multitude of things all playing out in one area, there's a very high probability that you're going to see a, a tank. Mm -hmm. And your job is to pick and not be greedy the most, the biggest part of that tank mm. and then capitalize on it. You know, so you bought it when it dropped. I sold it. I shorted it. So, so you, you already you, owned you it. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. When you short the market, you're basically mm -hmm. lending money from the broker to, to pay the other half of the trade. So you, you sell and then you buy back at a profit and give them back what you owe. So yeah. that's called short selling. Short selling. Anyway, you yeah. can basically buy long or you can buy short. Yeah. In a scenario like that, would you ever see something drop and buy and hold long enough in the expectation that it was a temporary drop? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, I've, What's I've... the longest you'll hold? Oh, I'm a, what you call a trend continuation trader. So the longest that I normally hold is when we hit the previous high. Mm. So I don't shoot for extensions. I don't shoot for unknown. I just, again, I'm very safe, very boring trader, but I take profits when I know I'm going to get profit. Yeah. Um, so, uh, yeah, trend continuation trade is where you take profits at the previous high. Yeah. Um, so you basically say, eh, I'm not going to speculate that the dollar yen goes higher. Exactly. Let me just take it at this historical high. So, exactly. So you got to do your research to understand what, what tools do you use? to do this yeah i use um the broker i mentioned that i'm with trade nation they've integrated with a platform called uh trading view which is a, mm -hmm. a web-based platform yeah, yeah. they're, they're so, pretty well i mean known. they're amazing yeah. they started i remember when they started it was so basic but now they've become one of the biggest trading platforms in the world and brokers are literally paying them to put their data on their platform so you can pretty much access any broker from there um and that's a web-based platform so you can just open any laptop with a half decent spec and trade from a from a web browser essentially. You ever so, do it on your phone? I 
I manage trades. Like if I have to go out, I, I use it to stop the trade rather yeah. than to get in on trades. Right. So, you know, I think if so something's going bad, yeah, you'll you'll use it on. You're out to dinner Absolutely. with the family. Yeah, exactly that. But it's very rare. How though. often? I'm gonna ask her. How often does your dad? You're out to dinner, <laughs> and he's like, "Stop everything! I gotta go to the bathroom and sit there in the stall and fix things." <laughs> Yeah. Really? We so the rule. so the system you have isn't going to make people a slave to their phone, phone yeah. or their laptop. Yeah. yeah, I just don't like when we family out for dinner, we don't have technology and phones. That's good. So I don't like that. But how long will you go without checking? <laughs> um, to be honest, the time frames that I trade on, I rarely have to check, but I, I do like to I do like to stay connected to the market. Twice so. a day? Once a day? Yeah. Five times a day? No, twi- twice probably yeah. on my phone. Yeah. So somebody who wants to learn this system can be something they can do part time, right? How much do oh, people yeah, need to start with the system? You started with sixty grand, which a lot of people don't have. Yeah. Can people start with sixty dollars, sixty pounds? Yeah, look, too little. You, you can start with anything, right? But you have to think about the percentage returns, right? So don't think of the money, because it all boils down to. Let's just say that you did a hundred percent return. Yes. Right. You got a thousand pound in your account, and you do a hundred percent return, which is amazing, right? A hundred percent return is amazing, and everything. Yeah. Well, you've got a grand, and you've had to learn trading and go through the stress yeah. of that. So then, it, that's why it has to be worth it to you. You have to enjoy it. Yes. Because otherwise, you could just put that grand into something else that you do enjoy and yeah. make way more than a hundred percent. But your right? student, your average student, how much do they usually start? Our with? average students around twenty. Five percent per year. No, no, but how much that. capital do they start? Oh, with? yeah, uh, two grand. Two grand. Yeah, yeah. I don't recommend any less than two grand because. Yeah, and you probably have some students who start with two hundred grand. Oh yeah, um, a lot of my clients now they have like you know a, a million of equity or yeah. half a million equity, something like that, where they want to start making money on it, making it work. Yeah, um, but that's not realistic for for obviously most people. So let's switch subjects for a second. I'm gonna bullet ask you some questions just on any subject health wealth love happiness so family Mm -hmm. and we're we're all going back this is a bullet rapid fire yeah yeah, great you're 18 years old again Mm. but you know what you know now okay what age would you get married oh do you know what me and my wife have spoke about this i don't think i don't know if i would get married okay that's good rapid so would your son be alive (laughs) <laughs> my son got me into trading when he was born no but i'm saying <laughs> so but i'm saying if you didn't get married you might not have your son yeah right yeah that's true so we'll we'll say caveat he wouldn't get married but he would have you yeah definitely you got one control two two okay okay number two if you couldn't be a trader and you couldn't have online education company what mm. would be your 18 years old what would your advice be to do for an occupation that's a great question I would still grab a <laughs> Pablo Escobar. I would I would still gra- like serve I love serving people. I love helping people uh-huh. and uh, maybe that comes from my childhood. But I I would also I would always gravitate towards something that's timeless and spaceless. So online. Like I would No, you can't do online. Oh, you can't do online. I'm making this hard on you. Wow. Um I would look around at what the most common problem is that people have in my local town and package together a process that would help them overcome. So what would that be right now? You're 18 right now in this year. Right now, it would have to be something to do with uh, mental health. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. It'd be something to do with mental health because it's rife. And, uh, so you would build a okay mental health company. That's good. There's some big ones out there. Headspace, Calm. Mm-hmm. Okay, next question. Um, you can't live in the country you're in now. Where do where do you go? If if I take that off the table, you got to live outside the UK. It would either be the US because we're just about to consider taking a look over there, or like Mallorca, somewhere in like a Spanish island. Okay, yeah. you like that heat. Okay. Would you tell yourself to believe in God at age 18? Or would you tell yourself to be an atheist or agnostic? I believe in... I would believe in what we said earlier, just loving everything. You know, just uh, understanding that there's good and bad in everything and just appreciating both sides at all times. Okay. So my, I, I would be my own guide. 
trusting in myself. Sir, so 18 years old again, I hand you $10,000. What do you tell? And you can only invest it in one type of investment. What do you choose? 18 do you tell? today. You're 18 right now. So Bitcoin's already. Exactly today. <laughs> that boat sailed. It's today. That's what I'm saying. What, what, what investment skill? Would it be real estate? Would it be trading? Would it be crypto? Would it be, you know, buying company? What would it be? You know what? I, this is the honest truth. I'd invest it in camera equipment and audio equipment, and I'd start getting myself out there on social media. Personal brand. Yeah. One hundred percent. Good. I've got. I've been helping people build big personal brands for a I long know. time. Okay. Next question. Do you, if you had children, you're eighteen. Let's say you're going to have children. Do you homeschool them or send them to a school system? Homeschool. We homeschool. Were, I took my kids out of school. Okay. Where'd yeah, you meet yeah. your wife? At a club. At a club? Yeah, yeah. Did you do years that ago. line? I didn't actually. You didn't say no, humanity is depopulating. No. no, no. We need to have two kids. I think I just. What was your line? Were you sober? I, I was probably getting there. Um, getting sober? Getting. Drunk. Oh, I thought you were getting sober. You were yeah. so drunk and it was after no, no, you no, were no, at no. McDonald's or something? No, no. But I, yeah, just. She said. She just gave me a number and I was like, I'll give you a call. And that was it. But 22 years later and two kids have been married for. A long time, twenty years. But your advice to yourself is maybe don't get married. Why? Um. Again, it's just traditions that people go into not questioning. I think a a a, a really important exercise is to question things um, and don't just go along with the narrative because it was it made sense to your peers. Um, for example, when I learned to drive, I asked my dad what car I should learn in an automatic or a manual. And he was like, a manual, because then you can drive both. Right. And, 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 and there was logic to it, obviously. But it cost me more in lessons because it took me longer to learn. Yeah. And I've driven an automatic car since I passed my test. And now all cars are going automatic, yeah. right? So it's like, it didn't serve me well at all. Like, so it was, I only went that way because he told Tradition. me. And same with getting on a property ladder and you know all the thing that ends up with a lot of resentful people yeah. and midlife crises because they get to like yeah. their mid-30s to 40 and they're like, I've done what I'd said I was meant to do. I did what I did the right thing. Right. I saved 10% of my income for yeah. 10 years and I've got one year's income saved. Yeah. Right? Because of inflation. Well, yeah. You save 10% of your income for 40 years, you've got four years income. What yeah. good's that? That's not going to yeah. retire you. Well, with inflation, it's not even oh, that. It's not, it's not even that. You it's could like save half. 10%. For 40 years, you keep enough of the current politicians, you're going to actually have zero absolutely buying power. I mean, or, or nominal buying, but this much is going to yeah, last yeah. you. People are going to be working into their 90s, into their people are going to work till they're. It's sad to see people grow old, yeah, right. work. So you're saying you can't just follow the system. So on that note, you're 18 years old. What are you telling yourself about money? About money. <clears throat> yeah, give yourself a paragraph. You're telling yourself, you said specifically, you know, build businesses. Obviously, you do trading because mm -hmm. that's what you know. But there's no rules. You're just telling yourself very specific things on money. So don't do too broad. What are specific things are you saying? Are you saying save up money so you right. can start trading? Save 2000 bucks up so you can start trading. Do technical trading. Understand. Only buy things. No. This is what I've kind of compiled yeah, yeah. from you. Only buy things that have research. Don't chase new trends. Look for look for historical data. What what are things like that you're telling your 18 year old self? Yeah, first of all, I'd say time isn't money. Money is time. So okay. if you believe time is money, you're going to then run out of hours in the day, and you're going to have this belief that you've got a limit on the amount of money you can earn. Yeah. So money is time, which means the amount of money you've got in your bank can buy you time into the future. And when you look at it that way, yeah, you're actually working towards creating freedom. Yeah. So that's the first thing. Second thing is never lend money to anyone. Okay. And if you lend money to anyone, uh, you know, just don't do it unless you expect to erode your relationships with people. Yeah. Uh, if the bank won't lend them money, neither should you. That's number two. Number three is save and invest 10% of your surplus income minimum and ideally increase that over, over a period of time every three months. Um, and then serve people like build a personal brand and people will be magnetized to you so that you can charge what you want and you can you know live a life on your terms that that 
probably a great place to start. Yeah, because I would say the only thing that's for sure going to outlast AI is personal brands. You can't take that away. Because people are going to still, it's like music. Music's going to get replaced by AI. Yeah. But still you want someone on stage until they have... That's why DJs won't be replaced yeah, by Yeah, DJ. And then eventually you're going to have a robot DJs. But by that time, it'll be... Uh, this I, is the next 10-year plan. No one knows the next 100 years of humanity. No. We may not even be no. here. I think AI will actually in, increase the demand for personal brand. Because yeah. there'll be... People will tune out to this whole AI language and how things are being said. And they'll be l listening for how things are being said. And they'll want direction. And they'll want leadership. And they'll want someone to hold their hand. Yeah. And they'll only see that in another human, you know, because they'll be so tuned out of all the AI social media or advertising or whatever's going on that they'll just want someone real to go, look, I'll pay you whatever. I just need, I yeah. know you can get me the result. I can't trust all these, yes. these robots. So that's where I think it will go. So one, so this is going back to 18 years old. You got to give yourself one very specific stock forex buy this what's something you like right now today wow um in the markets me personally yeah you're bitcoin. telling your you're telling your 18 year old self bitcoin. buy bitcoin yeah what about in conventional markets what are you telling yourself unconventional today? markets <laughs> no in in conventional markets. oh in conventional markets uh, i mean I don't know what stupid mistakes my 18 year old self's going to make. So I would just say like, buy the, buy S and P 500. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Actually one of my best stocks is uh, Schmuckers, huh. which is a peanut butter company. That's jelly. Yeah. Yeah. Peanut yeah. Jelly. yeah. yeah. And, you like Schmuckers? Well, you it's know, just a brand. That's a strong brand. Strong brand. Yeah. It has no plans to innovate or change. Yes. It's just peanut butter and jelly, man. And like Americans love it. And it is going like the the revenue per employee is like Google at that yes. company. It's crazy. It's like Warren. That's a Warren Buffett type stock. Sees yeah. candy. Yeah. He likes this debt. So do you do you like this down to earth strategy? Um, I like to hold a few of those. As I say, I build my wealth in a, in a pyramid. So I have the foundational stability in cash, like you yep. said earlier, and low return but kind of low risk. Yeah. Uh, and then I kind of build it up. So large cap stocks, medium cap stocks, until the point where I've got a small allocation for my speculation. Yes. Which is why I've only made 3 million from trading because it's, I say right. only, but uh, you know, 3 million from trading is a small portion. Still a lot. Of, the average of person would be happy with 3 million profit. Well, it's like 300 grand a year for 10 years yeah. straight, which is, which is good. But still that puts you at 300 grand, people don't realize it. If you make 300 grand a year in the US, you're in the top 5%. If you oh, yeah. make 400 grand a year, you're in the 1% of America, yeah. which globally puts you in the you know 100th of 1%. Yeah. I was just in Brazil. 70% of Brazilians make under $350 a month. Whoa. So if you're making 30, that's what I said in this video. I said, simplest get rich quick scheme that's legitimate is figure out how to make 100 to 200 grand and move to Bali, Thailand, or Brazil. Yeah. Yeah, Bali's. it's not how much you have; it's how much buying power you have. Totally. totally. If you live in New York City, you can make a million bucks a year and feel like you're poor. Yeah, you know, absolutely. That's it. That's what it's about. It's about your lifestyle expenses relative to your leveraged income streams. Yeah. Obviously, if you're, it has to be leveraged because if you're sat in a cubicle office earning the money, you can't really yeah. enjoy the lifestyle anyway. Yes. So, so it is about creating leveraged income streams, you know, and and social media marketing agency and online business and personal brand that's in my opinion that's the best way to make money well good i appreciate you coming on the show so we're going to put the notes the show notes the links to his system if you want to learn it the links to these charts that he talked about what he's doing with the markets amazing all the notes click the link below you'll see it in the description Go there. I tell people, don't just watch podcasts. Make sure you read so, yeah. at the show notes and click on all the different links. We'll have a lot of links to things he talked about, links that I talked about. And of course, if you're interested in the system that he teaches to learn how to trade, how long does it take a person? You have a trading challenge, 30 days? 30 days, but you, you, you know, realistically, you'll, be, you'll come out the other side 18 months. You'll, you'll, be, yeah. you'll be good. But you can start in less than a month. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. 30-day challenge is designed to get you on the right track. 
you know, yeah. and be confident in what in your future. Click the link, get in the 30-day challenge. Thank Thanks, you. Thanks, man. It's yeah. been a great conversation. Yeah, yeah. Good stuff.